ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I figure we're going to chill out with a little bit of chill off smooth jazz and hip hop cafe for studying and it's 10 hours long this is gonna be a marathon just kidding we're not going nowhere near 10 hours look ladies and gentlemen you see this section right here this is presidential proclamation 2039 i want to show you something about this unique agreement notice what i say here so as to provide clarity, each of the parties have and had a relationship prior to the entering of the agreement referenced herein, and according to the law of contract, that relationship provides for the existence of an express trust agreement. Each of the elements of such an agreement are present within the framework of the contract trust agreement. Notice this at C. To authorize and direct the creation for such banking institutions of special trust accounts creating a special relationship people special relationship special relationship for the receipt of new deposits special relationship which shall be subject to withdrawal on demand without any restrictions and or limitations and shall be kept separately in cash or on deposit at the Federal Reserve Bank and invested in the obligations of the United States as used in this order the term banking institution shall include persons engaged in transacting any other form of banking business proclamation 2039 declaration of the banking holiday this is the bankruptcy people a holiday it's a day off suspension they've suspended all banking activity March 9 1933 pay attention Public papers and addresses of Franklin Delano Roosevelt law by the General Assembly United States Congress March 9 1933 and the act associated by the same name okay just want to make sure you guys understood so your contracts each one of your contracts that deal with the banking institutions create a special relationship between the parties now we have a situation you have a situation we have a situation ladies and gentlemen there is a party this party right here his name is mr. Weiss he's an attorney and he's saying hey y'all we don't have nothing to do with y'all we don't know who y'all mother y'all need to what the y'all doing that's what he telling us so <sighs> let's do something I'm gonna do it on video because I don't know of any other place to do it uh, because he says he's not a party let's see if he's not a party Fidelity National Financial Ventures Incorporated Fidelity National Financial Ventures Incorporated question mark it don't want to cooperate Fidelity says, hey, we don't have nothing to do with y'all. Y'all and us, we ain't the same people. We don't know who the y'all are. Ladies and gentlemen, they are the largest family of title insurance companies in the industry. Now, hold on. Let me make sure y'all understand because Fidelity ain't getting it. And so, <sighs> let me make sure y'all get it. Ladies and gentlemen, see that right there? United States, Rushmore, Roosevelt, Caliber Home Loans, U.S. Bank Corp. Those are the companies. They're all <laughs> banks. And they all are part of our contract. Fidelity handles the titles, handles the insurance. We have title insurance against fraud. And now they're saying they don't have any contract with us. They're being very 
cryptic about it and they're asking that we remove them as a respondent nah sorry buddy you had a chance to respond you didn't respond now you want to respond after you find out about the arbitration but wait a minute you got notice of the arbitration over a month ago you didn't show up at the arbitration you're in default the arbitration award has already been issued and now you want to complain now you want to be removed I don't think so sorry Charlie Starkist doesn't like tuna no more all right ladies and gentlemen this video was done specifically not to talk about those idiots because they are idiots not to talk about these idiots because they are idiots we are doing this to talk about not that information not oh I'm sorry let's talk about this information right here this is a request for modification of the award that was based or that was issued on or about February 8, 2019. The agreement permits for modification of an award when it directly relates to the provisions of the agreement. Page 27 of our agreement is going to be roughly the same portion of your agreement. Uh, it's supposed to be in part, not and part. Any further remedial proceedings, actions, including binding arbitration, the exclusive remedy for settling controversies respecting this self-executing binding contractual agreement between the parties, and confirmation of the award in the District Court of the United States at any competent court of, or excuse me, under original jurisdiction, in accordance with the Federal Arbitration Act, or... See, that's the thing. That's what we put in ours originally, but now we took out the District Court and said Court of Original Jurisdiction... There is a court of original jurisdiction on a federal level. We'll be giving you more about that later. But as an Article III court on the federal level, and it was set up as an Article III court, and many of you don't know about it because you've been going into that non-Article III system, especially with the federal appeals courts. But anyway, confirmation of the awards in the District Court of the United States at any competent court of original jurisdiction in accordance with the Federal Arbitration Act or as agreed herein... We're in this conditional acceptance for value agreement contract number or through a form of the complainant's choosing shall constitute an agreement of all interested parties in the event of default and acceptance through tacit acquiescence, silence, failure to respond when a request for summary disposition of any claims or particular issue may be requested and decided on by arbitrator. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what's happening. We've asked for summary disposition. And they didn't respond. So that's why that's put there, because they lose. Because they didn't respond. Ladies and gentlemen, notice this right here, because this is what you all need to understand. Each one of the contracts that I put online are referred to as unilateral contracts. Let's find out what a unilateral contract is. Let me explain to you why the contract works, why Congress had no other choice but to declare Mr. Stark's contract as binding on all parties. On or about October 22, 2018, the parties entered into a unilateral agreement, i.e. unilateral contract, whereby the parties specifically agreed to perform actions upon the acts of another party. Okay, it's supposed to be upon the acts of the other party so we would act when they act they were supposed to act because we were responding to their junk they didn't act sorry Charlie a unilateral contract is a contract created by an offer they made an offer and we did a conditional acceptance of their offer so they created the contract by making us an offer so we countered their offer with our offer then can only be accepted by performance well what's the performance let's put that there so that we know that that's a definition here is the performance the contract expressly provided that the respondents offer to recontract would be accepted only under the conditions stated in the contract. One of the conditions provided for the respondents responding to each and every point of environment specifically and that any non-response and or non-specific response and or general response will constitute a failure to respond and that any failure to respond will result in an automatic default. 
any of these actions and or inactions by the respondents would constitute performance, thereby making the agreement binding and enforceable. Ladies and gentlemen, when you receive that nice little contract, that notice of change in terms of agreement, and you don't respond, you it's called silent acquiescence, silent acceptance. Your silence is your action. It happens to you every day of your life, and you don't even realize it. Well, what we're doing is we're turning it back on them. My hope is by Thursday to complete a video for you guys that will explain what happens after you get your award, where you should go, how you should go. We're going to talk about that court on the appeals level. Most of your contracts speak to, watch this, let's get this done. Uh, yeah, we got to do original. make sure I'm about to go lay down because I'm tired no see it says that the venue is proper in any court of original jurisdiction wherein either the arbitrator resides or the choice of the complainants as stipulated in the agreement so let's find if the contract I'm looking at the wrong court of original jurisdiction now that's the whole thing uh, we kept putting in ours court of original jurisdiction okay or as stipulated in the contract any court of original jurisdiction we made sure we said original jurisdiction because the contract let's do this this is going to be the federal district court that's that section now and notice what it says in accordance with the general principles of non-statutory arbitration wherein this conditional acceptance for value agreement contract blah 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 constitutes an agreement of all interested parties in the event of a default so that's the other action their defaulting constitutes an act on their part sorry that's what they get now let's go to the next the parties have stipulated that any court of original jurisdiction may enforce the provisions of phase two equitable relief awarded by the arbitrator okay now, confirmed by any court in America have an original jurisdiction pursuant to 9 U.S. Code 9 and 13. That's why we did that. It says the court, if the party stipulated to that. See, you don't necessarily have to have your arbitration confirmed by the district court. It can be by any court because that's what the act specifies, stipulates. Let's do that. Number 13. So we got 9 and 13. Now I was copying this, but which one is this one? Give me one thing. One thing. This number 5? Number 5. This number 5, y'all. So we're going to go 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh-oh. We, we only went 6. We got to go 7, 8, and 9, baby, baby. Okay. Pay attention. Any party to the arbitration may apply to the court so specified. What what specified court? Well, if the parties in their agreement have agreed that a judgment of a court shall be entered upon an award made pursuant to arbitration and shall specify the court, not the district court, but the court, the court. Now it says application may be made to the United States court in and for the district well the state court is a United States court according to the act people but you can go to any court you don't have to go to the one in the area where you live okay because it's any court so specified but you have stipulated in your agreement a court of original jurisdiction so tomorrow we'll do a video telling you guys about how to proceed what court to go in if you're gonna be going in hey ladies and gentlemen gentlemen and ladies just want to take less than 15 minutes to explain to you this trust agreement relationship that you have the contract itself its language and your right to request for modification let's say a year passes let's say nine months passes and you've had in your contract that the fees are to accumulate and reasonable fees it has to be reasonable people fees are to accumulate daily weekly monthly yearly then you can go back in for modification because the numbers have changed ladies and gentlemen reread the arbitration act 
United States Code, section 1 through 16. 15 minutes, y'all. Time up. Goodbye. <laughs>